Hey, hello, how do you do? Shady Do Rags here, and welcome to another episode of Episode Rundown, where I, Shady Do Rags, run down the episodes of Miraculous Tales of Ladybug and Cat Noir. And today we're going to talk about episode 21, Kung Fu. And this episode just put a big smile on my face. We're, we're back in the positives for the episode. So the episode starts with Marinette trying to learn some Chinese. Interesting thing, Marinette is Chinese, but she doesn't know Chinese. Uh, apparently she's lived in France her whole life, which I know the show is supposed to be like in French. You can tell by all the text. Um, but anyway, she, she's trying to learn Chinese because her uncle, who's a famous, uh, Sifu is coming down, uh, Sifu for food. He's coming down and she wants to like, she's, she's going to his event. He's coming down for a cooking event and she's going to it. I don't know why her parents weren't there. Like, I don't think they ever really gave an excuse as to why her parents weren't there. Um, and one of them probably knows Chinese since that is her uncle. So I, I would guess her mom's side, but they don't really give that much information about it. But yeah, she's struggling with it. Um, she's struggling with it and her uncle, well, she's actually getting it down. But once her uncle gets there, she gets really nervous because that's how Marinette is. So the uncle arrives and she gets like really nervous in front of him and messes up the Chinese completely. And she gives him flowers, he takes some of it, and he puts it in his pocket. And she freaks out and does the marionette thing and calls Alia, which is kind of something I thought she only did with Adrian, but you know, it's in, it's well within character. Speaking of Adrian, Alia gets Adrian to come down to Marinette's place and help her translate to Chinese. Alia is the best wingman. She has been on it with her wingman duties. And so Adrian comes down. And he translated to Chinese, and it turns out the uncle can speak a little bit of English. Kind of feels like a waste of time, but I'm willing to forgive it because there needs to be more interaction with Marinette and Adrian. And speaking of which, throughout this episode, Adrian and Marinette talk like normal characters. Like, Marinette is not just bumbling, 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 and Adrian is not the stereotypical nice guy. I mean, he's still a nice guy, but like... He's affirmative about some things, which we'll, we'll see as we come along. So they go to the, the hotel, Chloe's dad's hotel, of course, because they want to reuse the assets. They keep throwing Chloe's dad into so many things just so they can A, reuse the assets, B, put Chloe in places she shouldn't, she shouldn't be, and also put the mayor in places he shouldn't be. So they go to Chloe's dad's hotel and they... They see Chloe there, and Chloe's like, ah, oh, Marinette, I hate you. You know, Chloe, I love Chloe. She's probably my favorite episode, uh, my favorite episode, <laughs> my favorite character in the show, but this episode was one of our weaker ones. She's basically like, oh, I hate Marinette. And Marinette's like, well, my uncle's making soup. <laughs> and Chloe says, I hate soup. He's definitely going to lose. I'm going to give him a zero. And Marinette says, well, he doesn't need your approval to win. He can still win. And that gets on Chloe's nerves. So Chloe goes to sabotage the soup. And that part kind of peed me because like the fact that somebody can just walk into a place, uh, walk into the kitchen, distract the chef and sabotage his soup. Like even if it's one of the judges, you would think they'd have the judges in one spot until they were ready. And the fact that Chloe is a judge, like Chloe is not famous at all. Like I've always had issues with food judges because sometimes they'll get food critics. Yes, that those are the kind of people you need, either food critics or chef, you know, chefs, people who know about food. But then sometimes they'll just get random celebrities. And it's like, why would you do why would you do that? They don't know about food. So putting them on the panel. But Chloe's not even a celebrity. She's just the daughter of somebody who's um, famous in, in politics. That, that's all she is. Maybe she's a celebrity, but they've never really shown her to be a celebrity. They've just shown her using the mayor's power to get what she wants. So to see her on the panel of judges is like, yeah. I mean, the, 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 the offsprings of poly political people can be celebrities. They can. It's just they haven't established that Chloe is one. So the, the dude brings out his suit. And it's awful. He gets a horrible score. Chloe doesn't even try it because, like, she knows it's awful. And that 
the the guy realizes that he's super sabotaged and that targets him to become the Akuma. Marinette and Adrian actually figure this out. Marinette's like, I think Chloe sabotaged the suit. And Adrian says, you know, I hate to admit it, but I know her too well. And while I love, I absolutely love that these two are having a conversation. Like, Adrian, why do you still hang out with Chloe? I know she's your oldest friend, but you need to set, like, you're a good person. Adrian's a good person. He's smart, and he knows that Chloe is not a good person. He knows this, but he won't say anything because of this guilt trip that she's my oldest friend. Like, it's not even interesting guilt trip or anything like that. It's just he just stays silent. And it comes off as him being weak. And I know Adrian, like, you know, he's Cat Noir. I've seen him very opinionated. <laughs> so, anyway, the guy, the Sifu becomes an Akuma. And I just burst out laughing when I saw his design. <laughs> just, ah, uh, they just went full anime. And it's kind of stereotypical because the guy is Chinese. They even they even make this joke in the show where Chloe says, "What's he gonna do? Make us tofu and and or sushi?" That's what she said. What's he gonna do? Make us sushi? And Adrian says, "Sushi is Japanese, not Chinese." This guy looks like freaking Super Saiyan Goku. Dragon Ball Z is Japanese, not Chinese. <laughs> uh, but you know, it does come from uh, Journey to the West. So, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so he becomes, uh, Kung Fu. And his powers are he can control everybody who ate the soup, which was the four of the five judges because Chloe didn't eat it. He's going to boil Chloe in a, in a pool full of soup. And he has this bag he can pull out food weapons. Um, so while I, I was upset to see that, again, they're using the mind control power. Like, that's really boring. Stop doing that. But at the same time, it, it was very limited. He couldn't just control anybody. He could only control people who ate the soup. And I thought they were going to make him control Cat Noir because Cat Noir ate some of his caramel, I think it was. Um, whatever was blocking the exit. But it's not any food. It's just the soup. So, Cat Noir and Ladybug, they have to fight the pedestrians as they go up to the top of the hotel, because that's where he is. It's kind of like, uh, ah, I can't remember that movie with, uh, with Jet Li in it, or Jet Li, Bruce Lee, <laughs> with Bruce Lee where he's climbing the tower, but it's, it's kind of like that, but not really. Uh, and they all have food weapons. Oh, Jagged Stone is in this episode. I forgot he was one of the judges. Again, three episodes in a row you're using this character, like, golly, and he's playing pivotal roles. Anyway, so they fight these people, you know, action scenes, blah, blah, blah. And there's this one pun I really want to point out. They they defeat the last guy before they get to Kung Fu. And Marinette says, time for the second course. I'm like, why did you say second? Why not say main course? It would have worked so much better just to say main course. Like, I guess it kind of works, but you have to think about it way too much. If you just say time for the main course, it would have been a perfect pun. Ah. Uh, Anyway, complete nitpick, but I really want to point that out. So they get to the roof and they do their usual thing. Like nothing really interesting. Ha oh, something did happen. I almost forgot this. Freaking Kung Fu looks at the monitor and is like, who are these superheroes? <laughs> I'm like, um, the whole point of Akumas is to capture the Miraculouses. Why does he not know who these people are? <laughs> Like, Hawk Moth, you need to get on your job. You have one job. And um, also they do the thing where Marinette immediately recognizes him as her uncle. You know, the thing I've been complaining about over and over again. I'm kind of numb to it at this point. So they get to the root. They defeat Kung Fu. He doesn't, he, uh, actually, he doesn't boil Chloe because he wants the superheroes in his soup. Like, he says they're the perfect ingredients. He wants to put all of them in. Um, but they defeat him. And afterwards, they they cut to uh, Marinette and Adrian and Chloe. And Chloe is saying something and Adrian's like, did you get kicked off the panel? Or somebody said, did you get kicked off the panel? And I'm like, did we skip a scene? Why was Chloe kicked off the panel? Did they discover that she uh, cheated? Did they just not like the fact that she wasn't willing to even try the soup? Like, why did she get kicked off the panel? That's not explained. And 
freaking whatever his name is, seafood kung fu chef, seafood, seafood, <laughs> seafood kung fu chef, like he's just back in there. They're just like, okay, we'll give you another chance. Like, why? They don't show why. That's a huge skip, and it really pulled me out of the show. Uh, but obviously he wins because this is that kind of show where, you know, happily ever after has happened. And, like, they show this picture of Adrian and Marinette having dinner with him. He renames the soup Marinette Soup. Why? Why did he do that? Marinette didn't do it. I mean, she gave him the flowers that he, he later used in the soup. But the, the soup was called Celestial Soup, which is a fantastic name for a soup, especially a soup that's supposed to be the best soup in the world. And he's like, I'm calling it Marinette Soup. Why? Marinette did nothing. Nothing for this. Also, Marinette started feeling guilty because she antagonized Chloe. Chloe, uh, she, she says she antagonized Chloe. No, she did not antagonize Chloe. Chloe antagonized her and she stood up for herself. No, that's different. She didn't just start mess with Chloe. Chloe started it and she, she stood her ground. That's what I didn't like that they were trying to guilt trip her about that. So all in all, I know I've had a lot of nitpicks with this episode, but quite frankly, I did enjoy this episode a lot. I loved that Adrian and Marinette were having so much interaction because we've seen them as Ladybug and Cat Noir. Like we've seen that and over and over again, it just gets old because they're not a really good foil. And Adrian and Marinette, and Marinette aren't that good of a foil either, but they work better than Cat Noir and Ladybug because Ladybug is just so, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, I, I, like so focused on defeating the bad guy and not in an interesting way. Like, uh, it's very hard to describe. Like, uh, but just, just get the gist that they're not that interesting of a foil when they're superheroes. They're, they're better at being friends than they are at being super friends. And, uh, one more thing I want to say. Oh, yeah. You could say it's out of character that Marinette can just talk to Adrian in this episode. I'm looking past that because it seems to me that they're trying to develop some character. So it's like sacrifice this part of character for this part of character. Um, and it's, it's something I've been waiting to see a, a while just to see their relationship just step up in some way. That they just talk to each other like people. And also, I'm willing to forgive it because she was distracted by her uncle. Her uncle was the one making her nervous. And that's where a lot of her nervousness went. So Adrian being there as the, the calm voice of reason. This episode reminded me a lot of Origins. Because back when they first met in Origins, Adrian was the confident one. The one uh, who pushed Marinette. Or him as, as Cat Noir. Cat Noir was the confident one. He was pushing Ladybug to be confident in herself. And that's how I felt they were in this episode. I like that. I like that they have that kind of Gurren Lagann relationship sometimes. Don't believe in yourself. Believe in the me that believes in you. Like, when somebody believes in you, that can drive you to believe in yourself. It can give you that confidence because you're confident in them. And, like, I'm fine with Adrian doing stuff like that. Like, him saying, you can do this or it's not your fault or something like that. Um, I'm perfectly good with that. So I really did like this. It also freaking Goku <laughs> food. He's a food villain. It's so appropriate, but at the same time, so inappropriate. Because like I said, he's Chinese. But, uh, you know, Wukong was Chinese. So where was he? Uh, anyway, that's all for this time. Um, I'll see you guys next time for episode 22. This has been Shady Rex. So long. Farewell. Happy to say. Goodbye.